Texas Congressman and Chair of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Michael McCall. Mr. Chairman, nice to talk to you, sir. Thanks, Greta. Thanks for having me. Uh -huh. Mr. Chairman, you know, I think most Americans want to be tough, strong uh, with China, and we don't want China, obviously, to invade Taiwan. But where is that line between being tough and strong and running the risk with high-profile visits by members of Congress by going to Taiwan and getting China all revved up about it? Well, yeah, it's interesting. I talked to our uh, the ambassador from Taiwan about this very issue. Um, I know the speaker's visit last uh, go-around did raise tensions, and I think that that is an issue. Uh, I am planning to visit Taiwan uh, for several reasons, though. I, I want to show Taiwan that the United States supports Taiwan. Uh, we also want to provide a deterrence to China uh, from invading. And I think deterrence can be done in, in a lot of ways. Uh, one is diplomatic, which would be the um, reason for my trip and delegation to Taiwan, but also military strength. And, uh, right now, you know, I, I signed off on weapons three years ago that have yet to go into Taiwan. Uh, we don't have any joint military exercises with Taiwan. Um, if we're going to provide deterrence in this very dangerous time right now, uh, I think we need to be doing a lot more when it comes to deterrence. Do you think President Xi is taking sort of a page out of what he's watching between uh, with President Putin and Ukraine? Is there any sort of message he's learning there by sort of the global response or how, how the world responded to that uh, in, in measuring what he's going to do? Of course. I mean, Chairman Xi is studying uh, Ukraine very closely. Uh, what uh, is Ukraine today could be Taiwan tomorrow. Um, I think a victory for Ukraine against Russia would be a very good deterrent against Chairman Xi in invading Taiwan. And, and so, uh, you know, we've seen lately these reports now, not just of buying energy or providing uh, components like satellite and surveillance components to the Wagner Group, but now the, uh, the possibility they're going to provide lethal weapons to Russia to uh, fight Ukrainians with. This really escalates uh, the tension and the conflict, but you can't separate the two. They're both allied with each other as is Iran, for that matter, with the Iranian drones and North Korea. Are we in an arms race? Because we, we hear that, uh, I mean, the U.S. is now developing a hypersonic missile. China has one. Russia has one. Uh, Iran is nearing very close to being able to have a nuclear weapon, a uh, nuclear bomb. And it, it seems like everything is going in one direction. I mean, even the, uh, the uh, Chinese defense minister wouldn't take our secretary of defense's phone call during the spy balloon. It seems like everything is going in the wrong direction. There's nothing going towards peace. It's going towards an arms race. Well, I mean, I, I go back to Afghanistan. That was a turning point. Uh, historically, you know, when you project weakness, you invite aggression and war. When you project power and strength, uh, you get peace. And I think Reagan uh, taught us all that lesson. Going back to Chamberlain and Hitler, uh, you had that axiom that, that proves correct in historical terms. And I think you're seeing that right now since the fall of Afghanistan and the weakness being projected, I think, uh, really provoked uh, Putin and, and Chairman Xi to be more aggressive to do something that they've been wanting to do, you know, for quite some time. When it comes to nuclear arms, uh, the Russia now uh, is going to violate the New START treaty. Uh, and the problem with China is, Greta, we don't have a treaty with China. So even if we did, we couldn't, we couldn't enforce any sort of nuclear restrictions on the hypersonic weapon. China developed this almost a year ago. They can circle the world and land with precision with a nuclear bomb. We don't have hypersonic missiles right now in the United States. But I also would uh, like to bring up that the, the Chinese hypersonic is built on the backbone of American technology, and we found component parts in the spy balloon as well as the Iranian drone. So it gets me back to the point we got to stop selling this technology that then goes into military weapon systems that could be turned against us. Uh, I, I don't know. I've interviewed Prime Minister Netanyahu many times. I don't know if he told me this or I've just heard him interviewed so many times I've heard him say this, but he says that, that he will never let Iran get a nuclear weapon, nuclear bomb. Well, we're, you know, it looks like that's right around the corner. So does the United States let Prime Minister Netanyahu do this himself? Or does the United States get involved somehow? I mean, where is this going? It's sort of the unstated fact is that we're, they're going to have a nuclear weapon soon unless somebody does something. 
Well, I think you're right. They're approaching 85% uh, enrichment, which means weapons grade. 90% uh, is weapons grade. They're very, very close right now. Um, and so that's uh, it's very dangerous. I think uh, we need a bold commander in chief to say it's a policy of the United States that a nuclear run is not acceptable. And we need to stand by Israel. Israel cannot do this alone, by the way, Greta. It necessarily takes our action as well. But I don't think the United States and Israel should be doing this alone. I think we would need to join with our allies and our partners. If anything that's come out of this invasion of Ukraine is a stronger NATO uh, and allied system, and we all need to stand against a nuclear Iran and let the Ayatollah know that we will, uh, that is unacceptable, and let them know in uncertain terms what that means. But what does that mean? I mean, it's one thing to say it's unacceptable, and we're sort of running out of time to sort of all agree with our global our allies is what we're going to do. We're, we're really running down the clock on that. I mean, you know, it, it, to say it's unacceptable, like, so what, what are our options? Well, I think back channel let them know that we will take a military action against their nuclear program. And I've seen the plans to do it. We were capable of doing it. Israel can't do it alone. Um, but we have to have our allies with us on this and send a very strong message of deterrence, uh, which we haven't been doing lately, uh, that we're not going to let them go down this path. It would mean a nuclear arms race in the Middle East, a direct threat to Israel, but also Saudi Arabia, and the whole region would turn into an Armageddon, if you will, uh, of, of uh, you know this nuclear arms race. Um, and we have to stop it with the Ayatollah. If you go any place, uh, any shopping center, anything, you look at kids looking at their iPhones. They're all looking at TikTok. What do you say to uh, to young people looking at TikTok? They don't want you, they don't want that taken away from them. So, what's the threat there? They don't they don't want it taken away. And you know, I talked to my own children about this, and you know, it's it's a, a favorite uh, app for a lot of the younger generation. Uh, the the problem is, and and this is uh, all the top national security officials have warned about TikTok. It's really a back door into your iPhone. Uh, it'd be like a spy balloon in your phone that can not only look at your data and most sensitive data, but also track your keystrokes, uh, track your uh, uh, database searches, and send uh, messages on the phone to influence your way of thinking and behavior. It's a, a direct line from the PRC into our youngest generation's uh, phones. And uh, that's why I marked up and passed out of my committee a bill to lay the constitutional framework uh, to ban TikTok, uh, as we've done with members of Congress, protect our own children from this threat from the People's Republic of China. Mr. Chairman, thank you, sir. Thanks, Greta. Thanks for having me again.